Okay, everybody, welcome to the Monday, May 13th regular council meeting. Let's stand for the pledge. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have got a few additions to the agenda, uh, additional bills for approval. We are gonna hear from Mike O'Connell tonight regarding the SS4A planning grant, an updated resolution accepting donations. Thank you letter from Laura Silvernail to Sergeant Tony Marks. Notice of cemetery cleanup, resolution restricting parking on County State Aid Highway 66. So I need a motion to approve that. I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, additions to the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All in favor. Now we have public forum. Action may or may not be taken on any issue raised. If council requires more information or time for consideration, the issue will be placed on the next agenda of the re regular council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. TJ has got something for us. Can I my address? Yes. <laughs> yes. You actually? Do. I'm sorry. 31410 Paul Circle, Pico Lakes, Minnesota. And here with me, I have Karen Field, and she is our new library coordinator. Um, we're very excited to have her. She hit the ground running the first day. She was making calls and telling the people to get their books in. So <laughs> she's, uh, she's, she's, no, she's fit in really well. And she's, um, I think she's really liking it. So I just want to welcome her to the, to the community. We're happy to have her. Okay. Um, I just want to say a quick thank you to all the volunteers who run that library. Um, super knowledgeable. They love that library. Thank you to TJ for um, being so patient. He has two new people in that building and he's just been great. And then finally, um, I wanna thank Jane Monson. Sorry, <laughs> I don't public speak like this. Um, <laughs> Jane Monson who left all the files and information I needed to hit the ground running. So thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome, well, Karen. Well, and I have got an introduction. Cheryl? Yay. <laughs> I'm going to introduce Cheryl Murphy. She is in the office. I got to read this. City Treasurer and Deputy Clerk is her title. So welcome, welcome Cheryl. Cheryl. We're hearing really good things about you, Cheryl. So well done. <laughs> good. Awesome. Does anybody else have anything? Not so. Oh, come on up. Oh yeah, Alden. Yeah, come on up. This is just going to take a minute, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to calm your nerves. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Um, tonight's theme is a happy time theme. We're happy to be able to announce. And TJ, do you want to put up the announcement that we're going to have the grand opening? of the Pine River Overlook Park in June here. And so nice. uh, it's a result of a lot of effort by many people. And so we can be very proud of it. And it's very fun for me to come tonight and say, okay, we all worked together. We all saw the forecast of what it would be. We all saw what could happen and it's here. It's something really special. And so it's a happy time for me, and I think it's a happy time for all of us. It's a so, happy time. And Alden, you are an amazing individual. <laughs> you, you do this community well. <laughs> Thank you. David, it's more traditional to clap at the end. <laughs> Not at the end. We may have to take a couple <laughs> breaks, sir, but go ahead. <laughs> well, I'd like to say a few words about it. Uh, many gave so we could have this addition. We have over 50 names on the plaque of those people that gave over $500. And we have a lot of others that gave. And it was so much fun for Tom Swenson and I as a treasurer 
to open the mail up each month and there'll be more contributions, small contributions, big contributions, some from the foundations. It was really special. And it shows you what a nice community we have. People care about it. They care about the future. And so uh, it is a happy time for many of us. And I'd like to say special things, uh, special mention tonight. First for TJ, for seeing the vision of what this land could look like. And he's going to show pictures after that. But... Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and then shepherding the project through. You know, he shows he can manage the project. And we finish with something that we're pleased with. And we finish it within budget. We are real pleased with what happened. I'd like to also thank the council. Every time we came to present, you always gave positive feedback. And the positive feedback extends to us in the PAL Foundation, but to others in the community. And they say, this is something the community council thinks is important. And because you think it's important, others thought it was important, and we have it. So thank you guys. Yep. And when you complete your term and you look back and say, here was something tangible that happened really special for the long term. I mean, this park is going to be there for 20, 30, 40 years. Yep. And some of you will be old like I am now. And you can look back and say, I was on the council when this happened. And you should be pleased. Um, Mayor Dave, I especially want to thank you. You were so personally encouraging to me. Gave me time every time. And so, uh, and when we saw privately, it was always, yes, we can do this. We'll help you. More than <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it really was a nice feeling to get support. And uh, a couple of special mentions, Joel and, and Jerry, with their idea about changing that structure we were going to dispose of, the old shed, and making really quite an attractive, and you'll yeah. see the picture here now of a shelter. And that's more clever than just tearing it down and starting over again. And so we have something that we can really be pleased with at limited cost. And so we completed the whole thing within budget. And of course, you guys helped with the park dedication funds. Um, and then again, thank those that gave the many gifts. Many, many gifts. And we've been getting feedback of people that see it and they're pleased that they were giving gifts. And so um, I think you'll be pleased when TJ goes through some of the pictures, a couple of the pictures we have, and then you'll be more pleased and it'll be a happy time for you when you go down to the park and look at it and see, okay, here's what we have. And we hope you'll park that day. And we will remind you because there's a council meeting before we have the open house or the grand opening, but uh, we will be all happy time that day. So thank you. And now, um, TJ, do you want to show the other? Oh, okay. Do you want to talk about the picture of the wit? Just kind of what we have completed and just a little bit that needs to be completed before the um, grand opening. You see here, we have installed the dock slash launch. Um, the pavilion is 90% uh, done. We just have to epoxy the floor and then just, uh, put up a few additional signage and some cameras and we're pretty much wrapped up. It's been a fun and rewarding uh, project working with the Powell Foundation and the Park Commission and you as well as the, you know, the council. Um, I'm really pleased of the outcome and I'm already excited because I've been hearing people are already using it and it's not even technically yeah. open. So that's a good sign. So thank you to all and thank you Alden. Did you get irrigation and down my sprinklers TJ? Thank you. We also did. did. Yeah, the irrigation done? is done. There's been, yeah, oh, okay. so many different pieces of this, but yeah, the, yeah. the irrigation is installed. Okay. Now, before I sit down, I want to change topics. <laughs> now we're going to talk about pickleball court additions. And uh, what the pickleball group has been doing is raising money themselves, and they've done really well. And uh, we want to assure the council that we're behind it the, and we'll encourage the community to support this now. So it's not just the pickleballers that are trying to raise the, the money, but the whole community. And I think the same thing will happen as happened here. People will see and realize that we're gonna have something even more special in the pickleball assembly we have there now. Sure. And um, Peter is, is kind of the emphasis behind it. And he's gonna say a few words <laughs> and then I'm done. 
Peter, Peter. Um, what an introduction, Peter. Now, I'll see if I can live up to that. Um, Alden asked if I could come to the council tonight and just give you an update of where we are with the fundraising. Um, we have over $33,000 in PAL already uh, collected. And in fact, last month, $10,900 came in during the month of April uh, for the new courts. I have complete faith that we will get to the $70,000 that we put as our goal for the project. I have no idea where it's gonna come from, but I have faith that it's, we're gonna get there. And it really is the full community that's, that's helping us uh, mm -hmm. achieve that. Um, I, I will share one story here, anecdote uh, with how that's coming about. Um, I went to the PAL meeting this morning and I mentioned to them that I'm in talks, discussions with um, the Greater Cross Lake Area Foundation about doing a challenge match for our courts. And they are talking about putting up $2,500 as a challenge. If you can raise that much money, we'll match it. And I mentioned that to PAL. And in the meeting at PAL, they said, well, we could do the same thing and voted for it mm -hmm. and said, we'll put up $2,500. If you can raise that money yourselves, we'll match it. So that's going to be 5,000 from the community giving the support and 5,000 coming from our two foundations here doing that, $10,000. I was so excited. I left that meeting, went out and played pickleball and of course had to share it with the group that was out there. And I picked up a check for $500. So 10% of the challenge is already uh -huh. in the bank. So it's coming in, it's coming from all different sources. It's a lot of enthusiasm. I just want to thank the community for the enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Peter. Good work, Peter. Cool. Anybody else? All right. We'll close public forum. Next is the consent calendar. All items here are listed, considered to be routine by the city council and will be acted on by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on the items unless a citizen or council member requests. Does anybody have anything? Nope. Motion? I'll make a motion to approve the consent to calendar. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All in favor. Okay, it's a mayor and council members report. And first out of the gate... Let's see, we've got Mr. Schweeters here. Might come on up, but tomorrow night at Boyd Lodge, there's a business. What's it called, Mike? Business after hours. Business after hours. Yes, thank you. It's the uh, well, it's Mike Schweeters with Boyd Lodge. We're over on Silver Peak Road. Um, <clears throat> yes, the Brainerd uh, Chamber business after hours, and it starts at four thirty. Goes till six or later. We're going to open up some cabins if anybody wants to go, and you're all welcome to attend. So come on out, uh, Jeff from Ideals providing hors d'oeuvres, and we'll have a, a cash bar there for it as well. So awesome. and you get to see myself and my lovely bride get interviewed. So it'll be fun. So hopefully you guys can make it. We'd love to have you out there. Good. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Thanks. Let's all show our support to the chamber and to the Schweeters. And... Okay, Mike, you want to come up? Sorry, I just said to throw that in yeah, there. No worries. Too many mics in the room. Uh, Mike O'Connell, uh, Cross Lake, uh, 34088 White Oak Drive. Uh, just uh, touching base uh, with the uh, resolution that uh, was provided to the City Council for regarding uh -huh. the Safe Streets for All uh, planning grant. Uh, over the last few months, we've been uh, positioning with this. So we met with Ideal Township. They have signed the same resolution that is in front of you guys for consideration uh, and voted last month unanimously to do so. Uh, asking for the same uh, from the city of Cross Lake. Uh, since we met with Ideal Township, it's been brought to our attention that, uh, which is a benefit to the city of Cross Lake, Ideal Township as well as that, uh, we won't be carrying this load as we initially thought we would be. We would be able to partner with and be a supplement applicant with Crow Wing County. 
which would hopefully uh, provide more weight as we cover more jurisdictions and, uh, and be more appealing of a grant for um, cool. the resolution for Safe Streets for All. Um, this is really blown up from a 1.7 mile trail that I thought of last summer to probably well over 30 miles of trail. Um, there's talk of big scheme, multi-phase, uh, coming all the way down County Road 16 out of Pellet Pequot Lakes, ideal township to connect the Paul Bunyan Trail to Cross Lake. Uh, that's a big, big agenda and will take many years, but going from 1.7 miles of connecting parks to parks, uh, keeping kids safe off of our streets in the city limits of Cross Lake, from the neighborhoods of uh, residential dancing bear to the school, to the park and uh, recreation for our recreational resorts. That was kind of the initial thought, but like the grant applies, it's safe streets for all. So it covers so many different avenues that I wasn't even aware of. So uh, I ask for your support and uh, signing the resolution and partnering with Crow Wing County and their application. And I believe uh, if you have any questions on things that are above my head, uh, TJ and potentially um, Tim Bray from the county can help answer any of those questions. Ideal board there. supports this too. What's that? The ideal yeah, board ideal, supports this. Ideal signed the resolution that yeah. you have in front of you and supported it. Um, and this is for bicycle traffic and foot traffic. Yeah, non-motorized non -motorized off the street uh, within the road right away. Um, in the ditches, so it's not looking at taking away land from anyone. It would be in the road right away, improvement, paved trails similar to West Shore Drive, uh, Diggett Pine Road, and Manhattan Beach Peninsula. Over awesome. Will we... it be done in phases? Yes, right. yeah, certainly will have to be. And so I believe if, I, if I'm if i incorrect, the county can um, correct me, but I believe that uh, this process, the application is due this week uh, on the 16th. We'll be notified by July or August if we are awarded this grant. And then implementation of this grant would start somewhere in 2026, which would fall right in line with City of Cross Lakes planned road improvement for Harbor Lane and uh, Crow Wing County's road improvement for 103 with, uh, with their resurfacing and uh, beyond. So it's falling nicely in place. So could Harbor Lane, uh, the trail there, be included in this uh, project? Uh, potentially because it would be connecting off of, uh, to the county road uh, where Harbor Lane hits 16 to connect us to where the dead end trail ends on West Shore Drive. That would then partner us with the city limits of Ideal Township and City of Cross Lake where it would stop. Ideal is um, sign their petition to have buy-in to continue a trail if we do on Harbor Lane to Silver Sands, Silver Peak Road, Silver Peak Road, and back to 16, which would then be their longevity of uh, multi-phase to get people from the resorts, the residential seasonal ownership on 16 off the road at 60 miles an hour, all the way to Ideal Township and their ballpark and picnic pavilion and long-term, 10 phases down the road, 20 phases to uh, Paul Bunyan Trail. Uh, the scenic, the Paul Bunyan Scenic Bypass, uh, Scenic Byway has supported this. Um, Pal has supported this. Lions Club, the Lake Foundation. Um, I truly haven't received any negative non-support, uh, council included and departments included from the city. So it, it may come and we'll be ready for that and uh, respond to it with logic and reason. But it's a good project for all. Great. Mike, I want to thank you for all your efforts to right, make this you. project happen. And I think it's going to be a great asset to our community. And I'd like to make a motion. Do it. <laughs> okay, I'd like to move that the Cross Lake City Council um, approve this resolution to accept the grant or apply for the grant. Second. Sorry. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All in favor, sure. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you all for all your involvement coming to meetings that you've been able to, the department heads, the staff that's helped, uh, all the support, Tim Bray and Mac Hilarus with the county, uh, TJ, and uh, everybody. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, next we have the Cross Lakers discussion, discussing signage and landscape of the roundabout. Good, Pat, you're going to come up and do it, huh? Good evening, Pat Natco, 36084, County Road 66, Cross Lake. 
Um, first, I want to give a shout out to Mike Schweders and Boyd Lodge. He didn't mention that they're celebrating 90 years in business, oh, which is okay. really cool and quite a milestone. So congratulations. Um, I'm here tonight as part of the connectivity group with the Cross Lakers. And as part of that group, um, we are encouraging you to be proactive in the design of the center of the roundabout. And I have spoken with Tim Bray about this. And we have, um, I've been in contact with Josh from Upland Advertising who designed the signs that are on County Road 3 going to 50 Lakes and out on County Road 16. And can I put this up there, TJ? So I have um, two bids here for the sign that would match the other signs. Um, the first bid, you can see that it's the, the exact same sign. The first bid is without Josh installing it, and the second bid is with Josh installing it. I've spoken with Tim Bray, and he said the county will more than likely not be installing this. So Josh would need a three to four week lead time for this. He can store the sign there. We can get it done and have it be ready to plant in the ground the minute the middle of the roundabout is done before any other landscaping happens. And then I'm also we're also asking that um, we don't know who to talk to about this, the design for the trees and the shrubs or whatever is gonna be in the middle of the roundabout. We feel it's important to get those in place and ordered and whatever they're going to be so that those can be planted at the same time as the sign and then the grass around it, however that would work. So um, we don't wanna wait until this whole thing gets done and then it's gonna be next year till anything gets done in the middle of the roundabout. So this could be ready to go and it could be done before even phase two is done of the construction project. What group are you proposing to do that? To do the landscaping? Yeah. I don't know who's in charge of that. Bill, Tim? There is a thing around about about the plan. Okay. So it would be a contractor's responsibility. Okay. Do you have any renderings of that or any that we can look at or yeah. options? Dr. Michael, I am sorry, but she's not located. Do we have any limitations as far as breakaway or the sign in case somebody runs into it? You can't put rocks in there, right? I mean, there's Jim. Should I wait? Should I wait till you come up? Okay. okay. We'll talk about that when he comes up later. Okay. So the idea is that um, we're all going to get busy with all of our summer stuff and time is going to fly here. And mm -hmm. the project is set to start July 8th, from what we understand. And phase one be done by Labor Day and then phase two starting right after that. So um, we don't, we yeah. would ask you to not wait until August to order a sign and have it be done. So Josh is willing to hold this there. He's willing to plant it in the ground whenever we need it to be. Can you give us copies of that? Um, hey, we have got that. money in the project for that stuff. Okay, thank you. That we have got money in there for that stuff, right? Bill, do you know what, I mean, there's there's money in for the interior of the roundabout, correct? So I think we could make a decision tonight on the sign if that's the direction we want to go. But the landscaping and who's going to pick the plants out and whatever, who's going to... Well, it sounds like there's a plan with the construction. So whoever gets the construction project... So we're just going to let them do it? Just Well, I don't know. Are we? Is, is that the deal? That whatever they want to put in is what we're going to have in there? They, they put in, uh, right now, they would bid the plan and they would put in the species and that the orientation and the, the density that we put in the plan, the roundabout in the center. The water quality ponds, um, those are going to go a different route. Soil and water has um, providers that they want us to use to do that work. Okay. Um, I. I, can, I don't think I can show it here, but I can give to whoever a copy of the plan. It lists the species names of what we're doing. It's not a pretty rendering, but it's a 
it's a layout for a contractor to hire a landscape company to put those in. I, yeah, and, they're I and they're probably going to want to do it kind of when most of the construction in that area is done. And then also kind of a time of the year, like like a July planting, an August planting would be bad. And mm -hmm. right. deal, but right. okay. but yeah, yeah I I, like to we could get a copy and they could scrutinize it. I'm just wondering, Pat, I mean, is that something the Cross Lakers would like so, to do? or something, well, I think or? There, it's done. It sounds to me like well, it's Well, but done. we could probably pick what kind of bushes or so oh. you probably don't care. Well, yeah, they're picked. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. But I think if you would provide that uh, rendering or that spec sheet to Shar, she could send it out with uh, the sign that we're going to get from her. I like Thank it. Thank you. Okay. I, I have a question. It's a Phil or Tim, one of the two, but... I saw rocks in there and I thought there was nothing no, solid. The, ro the rocks are, it's just a picture that he did on his computer. Okay. We're not planning well, when I looked at it, I assumed there. they were there. That's no. why I was questioning. Rocks. Whatever goes underneath the sign, like the one in this wall has, has a little flower bed in front of it. Sure. So that's something we would talk to the contractor about, I think, when the design. I think the idea and what we're trying to bring forward is to just be proactive and to get this done ahead of time. And if you want this sign in there, and you approve it, I'm willing to contact Josh, but he will need money down before he starts the project. And so- So at the June meeting, we could probably approve it and sure. cut a check and yeah. whatever. Yeah, okay. that would be fine. I also wanna show you um, a couple of the things that Josh designed. And I think I, you have seen these a few years ago, um, probably 2017 or 18, when um, Minnesota Design Team was here and we were looking at wayward signs and that there's been some talk about that. And so Josh has come up with these. The price on here is not accurate. This is from a few years ago, so we don't know what this would be. But this could be something that, um, that might fit in with the other signs and if people are interested, I'm just throwing it out there as an idea. Mm -hmm. So you can see that. So it could be like at the community center road pointing down to the dog park and the community center and outdoor worship or whatever it might be down there and maybe wherever else. I like so, the idea of the continuity of the mm -hmm. signage, the paddles. Mm -hmm. Looks good. So I will keep these. And if you have any other questions, you can let me know. And then if that could be on June and if you want to go ahead with a sign, then um, I'm willing to contact Josh and do that if you want me to. I feel like we should have a discussion about signs. It seems like we have about three different signs welcoming people to Cross Lake. Mm -hmm. So we got to get on. I like that sign, but I think we just got to acknowledge that and get to one sign. So okay. we should. Thank you. Anything that. else? Thank you, Pat. Thank you for your initiative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Tim, now you're up. Cross Jurisdictional Maintenance Agreement. Mr. Mayor and Council, thank you for having me tonight. Um, I have a couple items here. The first is the Cross Jurisdictional Maintenance Agreement between Crow Wing County and the City of Cross Lake. I believe it was five or more years ago that uh, one of the, I think it was the Cross Lakers or maybe even the Garden Club had come forward and was looking for some beautification of the bridge railings that are on County Road 63 and then 66, it's Daggett and then the, the river. And uh, we had an agreement at that time and I'm here to uh, renew that. So to continue on uh, with that, if you so, so desire. It hasn't created a challenge for us and you've, the maintenance folks at the Public Works make sure they're up and down at uh, the appropriate times. There was a request earlier this year to do it by the wharf bridge too. And I did not authorize that because it's a different situation. It's a different railing. It's 50 or 55 miles an hour through there and you might be blowing the stuff off into uh, the river, or the lake there. So I didn't think that that bridge railing would be able to handle a system. So. We, we wrote that in here. That is really the only change that it limits it to those two bridges that where those existing planters are now. We'll make a motion that we approve the agreement between the uh, growing county and the city of Cross Lake for maintenance of the. Okay. Okay. Any other question, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, Thank you. And the next one is a continue on of a 
fairly long conversation about the fuel purchase agreement between the the county and the city of Cross Lake. And uh, our attorneys were talking extensively since the last meeting and have come to an agreement uh, on the fuel uh, language. One change from your packet, I think Char had at, at the beginning, we had inadvertently left out one sentence when we were doing some of the wordsmithing. And um, so the one in your packet under number two, the overhead fee, we only, in your packet, it only has the first sentence. A 10% overhead fee will be applied per gallon for fuel purchases by the customer. And what we forgot to put in is this fee covers administrative costs, maintenance, repairs, fuel system testing, and compliance fees incurred by the county. That's why we're collecting that 10% because we are doing all the testing, you know, the leak testing and the stuff for the MPCA. Um, and administrating the accounting and things like that. So I will continue to do that. Um, I will open up for any questions. I, if your attorney might want to weigh in on uh, the negotiations and what's changed since the last time I was here. So the county is going to do the leak testing. It didn't yeah. really say that, I didn't think. I don't know. Uh, we're doing everything is required to have a fuel point. Okay. And... Uh, in exchange for that 10%, you don't have to be involved with that. Okay. And, and that's what we've been doing since as long as I can remember, probably since the heel point was there. And I can add to just to, to kind of piggyback on that. Um, this came up at, I think it was two months ago's meeting. <clears throat> and there was there were questions about, well, how does this um, interact with that joint facility agreement? Um, and so in conversations um, with the county attorney's office, we're going to do an addendum to that document to clarify how this fuel system plays within um, within that joint facility agreement, just because it is kind of a separate part of that lot. So there will be a, an addendum coming in the future that will address some of those other concerns about who's responsible, what, you know, what does that maintenance piece look like? So this is kind of a smaller agreement um, that's now for the council, but there will be a future addendum to consider as well and we're all willing to sign that addendum we're all going to agree to it and well it's part I, of I just that. A, maybe a clarification I, I don't know that we've decided the mechanism yet i know you talked to the attorney's office but uh, because the facilities agreement is very specific about the three buildings the main garage the cold storage and the salt shed only we had purposely talked about the fuel point when we were putting this together there was some reason that the, the accounting attorney don ryan thought it should not be in there. So we need to work out exactly what that mechanism is. If it's a separate agreement, we do need to understand uh, between the two of us what happens to that fuel point uh, if something goes wrong or it's damaged or something like that. I don't know that we're sure if it's a separate agreement or it's an addendum to the facilities agreement that's already been signed by both parties. So just more to come. Yeah. Okay. And you're good with where we're at today? Yeah, and, and the, the addendum was the suggestion of the county attorney. So, so right now I'm drafting that document. I'll send it back. We'll work on you know, what it looks like. But that's, yes, that's the plan moving forward. Then I'll make a motion that we uh, proceed with this uh, signature on here, Crow Wing County Customer Fuel Sales Agreement between Crow Wing County and the City of Cross Lake. Second. Second. Oh. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Tim. Okay. We got a resolution accepting donations. We have a donation from the Cross Lake Firefighters Relief Association for $1,524.15. Here's the new one. Oh. Right here. Oh, they came up with some more money. <laughs> Cross Lake Firefighters for $4,463.75. To so go towards uh, uniforms. Need a motion to approve I'll that. make a motion that we accept that donation. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we've got some budget adjustments here. Who wants to take that? Any explanation or anything on it? Or? I I think we should table it and put it on the agenda for the next month because there um, 
with some clarification done after these budget adjustments were drafted. So um, I'd appreciate it if we would uh, table it and put it on the agenda next month. And if you want a motion, I'll make that a motion to table the budget adjustments and put them on the June agenda. Second. Okay, is there any problem with doing that? Why are you talking about the clarification about who Tech 2 is and who the assistant is? Pardon? Are you talking about the clarification of who Tech 2 is and the assistant? And, and the, um, when uh, when they were done, the 165000 was clarified after the fact okay. on capital outlay. So, um, Marsha, could you include that for next month? Is, is, uh, typically, we don't make these kinds of adjustments until later in the year. I guess I I want to know why we're doing it. I guess now. the reason is the reason that I ask for it is because there are some comments about um, the city council spending money that they haven't budgeted for. So I wanted to prove to the uh, citizens that um, we can do reallocation and stay within the budget. But I'll bet you it, it come uh, November we're going to be moving but, some of that money a second time. Well, no, I, I we we've never do done that yet since I've been on the council where we did budget adjustments. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Okay, I have got a planning and zoning commission appointment. Jeremy Johnson, did he happen to come tonight? I would like to make a motion to appoint him as an alternate on the planning and zoning commission. Second. Hey, any discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Invitation. You take this one, Jackson. Uh, oh, Sandy. Oh, I am. I had Sandy. Okay. <laughs> um, well, everyone's invited to attend the Cross Lake Economic Development Regional Workshop. Um, this event will be an insightful gathering where you'll have the opportunity to hear the latest updates from Crow Wing County about the comprehensive plan and the critical role of city and county planning. Um, the keynote speaker is going to be John Lubsky, uh, District 2 County Commissioner, and Chris Pence, who's the Environmental Services Manager. Um, EDA is sponsoring this. Patty, do you want to say anything about this? Okay. <laughs> Um, so John will give a brief update on Crow Wing County. Following John's update, Chris will provide an in-depth overview of the ongoing development of the comprehensive plan. This plan will serve as a roadmap for the county's development initiatives, encompassing a range of strategies and priorities aimed at fostering sustaining growth and prosperity. Both of them will speak to the plan and the importance of city and county planning. They will also talk about the strategies and priorities that will be implemented and measured. And this is open to the public. Okay, I encourage everyone to go going to be great. Good yeah. job, Sandy. That was a good warm up for your next one here. <laughs> um, this is a letter from Lori Silvernail to um, specifically address to Jake Meyer in reference to um, Sergeant Marks. Um, I think it's worth reading. I wish Sergeant Marks was here right now, but um, dear Chief Jake Meyer, I am writing this letter to express my sincere appreciation and gratitude. It's hard to believe it will soon be May 12th marking the one year anniversary of the passing of the love of my life and husband, Brooke Silvernail. That day was extremely difficult as I arrived home that afternoon to find Brooke in bed and unresponsive. After calling 9-11 Cross Lake Police Department, Sergeant Tony Marks was the first to respond and he met me with great professionalism and compassion. During a time of great grief and sorrow, he helped me with one of the first steps that would begin a very long healing journey. I greatly appreciate the work of Sergeant Marks and the entire Cross Lake Police Department. Before Tony left, he handed me his business card and said, if there was anything that I need, anything, please don't hesitate to call. If I am in the need of a police officer, I would be proud to give Tony a call. I was so thankful and appreciative for the way he handled this situation and proud to have an officer like Tony on our Cross Lake team. Thanks again, Tony. It's comforting to know that I live in a community that is fortunate enough to have public servants who truly care. To the extent that you are able, please place a copy of this letter in Sergeant Mark's personnel file as a commendation and sincerely thank him on my behalf. I hope you and your fellow police officers will enjoy these famous donuts from the Brainerd Senior Citizen Center, along with some coffee from Stonehouse and Nisswa. Just a small gesture of my thanks to all of you for your help. Sincerely, Laurie Silvernail. So 
good work on behalf of your uh, department. Awesome. And yeah, it's really awesome. Yeah. Make sure you pass that along to Tony. Make him watch this meeting. <laughs> okay, that's all it for the mayor's report. City administrator, take it away. <laughs> Actually, the first item is a huh? letter from Department of Management and Budget. Uh, it uh, is for council information. Uh, it's regards the Pay Equity Act and our compliance to pay equity. Okay. No motion okay. required. Okay. The uh, second item is a uh, set the special meeting for the presentation from Clifton, Larson, and Allen and to accept the 2023 financial statements, uh, tentatively set it for Monday, June 10th at 6.30 p.m. That would precede our regular scheduled meeting. There would be a council action that would be appropriate. I'll make a motion that we uh, set the special meeting for the audit presentation for Monday, June 10th at 6.30 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Will we get the um draft the audit before the council meeting? You will get a copy before, well before. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, opposed? Motion carries. All in favor. Aye. We already voted. We didn't yeah. see if anybody was opposed to it. Okay. <laughs> kind of cut off. <laughs> <laughs> but we did know. <laughs> All right, next. Uh, Shari, you want to take these two? Sure. This was regarding the location restrictions for um, selling liquor that Mike Stone oh. approached you with a couple yep. months ago. Yep. Um, so this is the formal ordinance. And is there a change to it? Or yes. We... Yeah. Yep. It is um, measuring the distance shall be measured between the main front entrances following the route of ordinary pedestrian travel rather than straight across the grass. Um, I move to approve the ordinance amending chapter four of the code regarding restrictions for license to sell alcoholic beverages. I'll second that. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The next one is changing ownership um, at Riverside Inn. Since um, Bob passed away, Shane and Judd will be taking over and they have formed an LLC. So they have turned in that paperwork and... Um, I'll make a motion that we accept the change of name. So do, can we transfer a liquor license? I it's not transfer, don't. it's a brand new. Oh, because this says transfer, doesn't it? Or wasn't that what's on the... It's an ownership change. Have we received the results of the background investigation? Yes, I got those this morning. It's positive. It is positive. It cleared. I'll Please. second the motion. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. The next one is for a new... Um, Business up north social in the old Judy's House of Gifts. Um, they will be serving self pour beer and wine and serving charcuterie boards. And she plans to open July 1st. All her paperwork is turned in. I do not have her background investigation back yet, though. Well, I move to approve the liquor license application for Up North Social, contingent upon the satisfactory findings of the background investigation. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> the next one is a resolution um, to renew the existing liquor license establishments for 24 25, and I just um, 
How did you come up with these numbers? Did you do any adjustments to them? Is this what you're doing here? Mm -hmm. Charges? Did they change from last year? No. Should they change from last year? No. Everything changed from last year. You mean the price, the cost? Yeah. The cost. I mean, what we charge. You didn't incre You didn't change liquor license costs. When was the last time we did an adjustment to them? It's many, many, many years. Or prohibition. <laughs> Probably. Probably. Whatever. And Dave, I looked at that this year actually before. Um, you understand actually, where probably, I'm going with it, right? I do. Yeah. I think it was actually last fall I took a look at that and compared it to other um, area cities. And we're in the mix. Okay. It's and, not that I want to change it, but with any of these things, we right. should. And we maybe should, but I, my thought was it wasn't, I mean, we have 10 on sale, and if yeah. you raise it. Right. It's just kind of. $100, I don't know. Yeah. But I do have that information gathered. Don't, we can look at it this year, maybe before budget time. Aren't called, aren't called licenses um, dictated by statute or not? Some of them are. Wine is off sale club. You can't raise those. Correct. Those are, yeah. Where's wine down at in this picture? Wine? Oh, um, wine down has not turned in their renewal application yet. I contacted her Thursday. Um, she said um, she was working on getting that done, and I haven't heard from her again since. So. A renewal and I asked different... that these be back in last Tuesday. So. Is her renewal at a different time since she's? No. So when it, July 1st. Oh, okay. But we won't have another council meeting until June, so. Yeah, well, somebody make a motion to approve it. I'll make a motion to approve the renewal of the liquor license uh, for 2024-25 as stated on the uh, resolution. Second. Okay, and the only point I was trying to make, like all the other fees that the city does, is with the cost of living increase each year, we should always be looking at that just so we stay correct. So that's all. I will bring that information to the budget meetings. All right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Patrick, you going to take this one? There is an addition. Oh, Cemetery. there you go. Oh, cemetery. Uh, Char and Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl one. Cheryl one. Cheryl one. <laughs> Ooh, Cheryl, well, one's not going to like that. Clean up the cemetery and uh, take care of anything that needs to be addressed at that time. And before that, hopefully this week we're going to get out there and fill in some of the low spots and do some hide and see. Cool. So remove all of your items by the 19th for cleanup on the 20th. Did he say that? No. Yeah. Remove on the 19th for cleanup on the 20th. Okay. Commission reports or reports. Mr. Meyer, Chief Meyer. All right. Um, you guys have a memo in your packet regarding some surplus equipment, specifically um, old squad computers. We change those computers out about every five years. Um, they start to not work properly after that. Um, they've just been sitting on a shelf, some of the old ones. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, this week they're probably going to go to <laughs> just a recycling center. But um, like a yeah. Should I talk in better? Sorry. Um, so I'm asking that you that they just be declared surplus. And um, I have spoke with the chief over at Kayana, and um, they got one, one computer, I believe. And he said he could probably um, use a couple more. Just they work, but not flawlessly. So Where are they going? Kayuna P Police Department. Okay. I just asked that we donate them to them. We were they they've been sitting on a shelf and. Um, it would it would help them out. So they're not worth anything. Like I said, they're going to be probably scrapped, but they can work. No, that's in, good. They thought. work in some capacity. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, well, I move to approve the donation of surplus police department computers to Cuyuna Police Department. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Motion. Oh,
And the next one is a um, resolution con um, concerning parking restrictions on County Road 66. And I believe Tim said he would help me with this one. Is this just for construction or permanent? <laughs> so we've we've had some crashes on County Road 66 when vehicles are entering the roadway. Um, specifically, if they were on the east side of County Road 66, um, they're entering the northbound lane of traffic before they can actually see around a car that may be parked right by that driveway, and they're going to hit. Talking about up on 16, County Road 66. 66, and in what intersection? All all public drive. Public oh, driveways, driveways, entrances okay. to businesses. Okay. So they're they're pulling out before they can see that that lane is clear because yeah. people are parking right up next to those driveways and there's mm -hmm. no line of sight. Mm -hmm. So what we've asked and what Tim put together for us is a resolution um, addressing that so the city of Cross Lake can um, identify some of these problem areas, the busy areas like um, your boat club. Um, the guy that runs that, Matthew, he got hit last year trying to pull out of there. You couldn't see. Right. Um, so I'll, Tim, if you, uh, first read. of all, this is, um, not really an initiative from, uh, the County right. uh, chief Meyer reached out to me and said that the public, uh, safety commission had, uh, some recommendations and this is just a standard resolutions that cities pass to identify, uh, these no parking zones, specific, no parking zones, uh, in your city, even though they're on a county road, you pass ones very similar to this. And we modeled it from that. For the project which identifies uh the no parking zones and the after condition after construction is complete and so uh just kind of helping him with the format of this uh it really is a resolution for yourself to be able to uh, paint those maintain those and then enforce them and just and letting us know where you're planning to do it it isn't so we're in charge of physically painting them you right and that i believe that was in, written correct to Right, and then for years it's kind of been a dispute, like who's who's painting what, and we weren't. Uh, and we have our new machine to paint yeah. curves. And yeah, no, stuff, that's good. So. All good. So it's just a formality that you can project to your residents and others that this is an official action from the county or from the city and the county, and just putting a county notice that they're they're there. So. Okay. I move to restrict the uh, resolution in restricting parking on county state aid highway. 2066 as described in the resolution. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, Paula, you all warmed up? <laughs> <laughs> For optics, I will be abstaining from vote 2A and B as the applicant is my boss. Okay. okay. Well, uh, good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Uh, I got a couple of items on the agenda tonight. First is the approval of a preliminary plat located off East Shore Road being proposed by Sundown Holdings. This is a preliminary plat subdividing 18.78 acres into 31 individual tracks in the limited commercial zoning district. Attached in your packet is the proposed preliminary plat, which was brought to our planning commission on April 26th and was unanimously recommended to be brought to the City Council for approval. Recommended conditions on the following pl plat consist of enter into a development agreement with the City of Cross Lake as part of the final plat paperwork, written documentation from Phil Martin, the City Engineer, stating the road and stormwater management engineered plan meets his approval, and this engineered plan will accompany the statement at the time of a final plat application submission, Subdivision plat of the Grand View second edition to have each lot prove a stormwater management plan when submitting for a permit, regardless of the impervious amount. This was agreed upon by the developer, Dan Miller. Uh, subdivision plat of Grand View, Grand View second edition to have no outside storage. Permanent screening between Golden Horizon and the proposed subdivision as approved by the Cross Lake City Engineer. And minimal tree removal. So what we are looking for tonight is an action request to approve the preliminary plat as recommended by the Planning Commission. So this is all above board. Everything's good. There's no, everything is good per hour. Yeah, the lot size meet uh, limited commercial district. Um, they are going to be handing over the street to 
um, the city of Cross Lake. They've been working with the city engineer, public works. Um, they've got um, what, some of it is is still getting worked on, but that's going to be finalized going into the final submittal. Um, so yeah, it meets all of our city standards and ordinance as a preliminary plat. And in some areas, it's actually going beyond, Dave. So I think the water retention on that uh, property is could be as high as five to six inches of water retention. I, well, maybe I should be directing that to Dan. I'm not so, sure which, but uh, well, no, it's just but five to six inches is my understanding. So when you talk preliminary plot, um, when does it become final? I mean, they have through another. They have plot? one year to submit the final plat. Also, okay. So this so they is have just to preliminary. Yep, they still have to submit a final plat for your approval. So this is the preliminary plat. Thanks, Aaron. They're meeting the stormwater requirements of the ordinance. There will be. And that's to manage the big event. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Does somebody want to make a motion? Does it does it stay limited commercial then? It yep. It, it, yes, it is the it is stated as the limited commercial. And that's what it plans to stay. Well, it looks like Dan's met all the conditions, so I I move to approve this preliminary. Second. Second. Any other comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um. All right. Second item on the agenda is to have a brief discussion regarding the topic of personal storage in the commercial district, along with the use of accessory structures. The city has been misinterpreting the ordinance allowing for personal storage to be permitted in the commercial district along with accessory structures to be allowed without a principal structure established first. Uh, we have been advised moving forward that personal storage is not a commercial use and cannot be permitted as such along with it is mandatory for an accessory structure to be subordinate to a principal structure on both residential along with the commercial and industrial zoning districts. So it has been recommended by the Planning Commission that a workshop um, be had between the City Council, uh, Planning Commission, City Attorney, and City Staff to discuss zoning topics regarding these issues. Um, a possible proposed time would be after the May 23rd on-site meeting. Because um, what the, the City Staff needs to have answers to and why a workshop has been recommended is, does the city want personal storage buildings in the commercial district? If so, how do we permit them? And if not, where do we want personal storage buildings to go? Because there is a demand in the community. Um, so, and if yes to the first two questions, clarifying the definition of a storage building opposed to accessory structure in the commercial district. So again, these are the questions the city staff need to be answered um, to be successful and better serve uh, the community. Did you see a workshop had already been planned? No, we are. We had proposed it. I mean, we had uh, had a discussion with the planning commission, and we would like to have a workshop between city council, planning commission. Hopefully, maybe pull in the city attorney and and discuss these issues because it's been, you know. It's been a long time coming to this point where we've been mis mishandling some of these zoning ordinances um, and just to do, you know, dig deeper into what the city wants moving forward and, and, and how do we permit them. So when are you proposing to have that? Did so May the, the first date that we threw out was May 23rd because we'll have an on-site meeting and the planning commission will, will be all together. We have we have negotiate union negotiations Maybe that day. I clicked the wrong date. No, it's the twenty third. May twenty third. At what time? Not at ten thirty or nine thirty. Not at nine thirty. Yeah. Yeah. We we could do it on that date at one o'clock. Yeah. But but we we're committed. Because Susan has a commitment at one o'clock elsewhere. That would I. That's fine with me. So you're going to have the city council. The planning commission and staff, and, and possibly if we can uh, bring in one one of our city attorneys, well, I think for a little bit of time, anyways. I think the city attorney should be there because they're the ones that pointed out that 
we're uh, interpreting the accessory building wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I guess we really need to get that squared around before we go any further with um, building and permits for storage sheds because they're they're not accessory buildings if they stand alone and there's not another structure on the property. We need to get a handle on that how we're going to how we're going to proceed with that. Right. So we have a 9:30 with the union that yes. morning. Yeah. And is that going to go 2 hours 10:30 11:30 and we're saying do it at 1. Susan has to have a, she has to leave because she has a by 1 Ripley. in Port Ripley. So it'll be done by noon. Yeah. Yeah, and we should be done with our on-site meetings by then too. So, is it going to be hard for you to call the guys back, or unless you're there till noon? Yeah, I, mean, I think we we'll probably. I think we have a number of. So I'm, I'm guessing, and I can't speak for all of the commission members, but I'm assuming we would probably go till until around noon, um, and so hopefully they can stick around for a little bit longer and make it a day. What did we say? 12? Yeah, or 12. We're in charge. 1230. 12.15. 12.15, give everyone a short break. And... Well, let's see if it works with our city attorney. Yep. Jordan, what do you got me? Are, are we going to get any more information on what we uh how we should be considering storage sets versus because we've been handling them as accessory buildings uh are we going to get some direction since the uh city attorney said wrong what? oh <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i'm used to him <laughs> <laughs> Identify yourself. I you were in charge. <laughs> so I apologize. Rosac Maloney. So I'm the one that talked to staff about uh, this issue with the accessory structures and the fact that, as I understand it, your land use table has been interpreted in a way to allow accessory structures as a permitted use. And for example, limited commercial and wherever, without requiring that there be a principal structure. So you've got an inherent conflict there between the interpretation of your land use table and the language of the ordinance itself. Because if you just follow the language of the ordinance, you can't you can't have these these developments of where there's nothing but a bunch of storage buildings. They're accessory structures. They're not a principal commercial use. No. <clears throat> no, because it's not a it's not a commercial use. They're being sold to private people for private use. It's not a business. Right. So we can certainly provide a memo to that effect for the meeting. One of the things that's in your packet, though, is proposed moratorium or ordinance. Mm -hmm. You've got people in this community, as I understand it, that are uh, working on these developments right now or thinking about these developments right now. And the reason that that moratorium is in your packet is to suggest, you know, my suggestion is to go ahead with that moratorium now and freeze what's going on so that we're not approving any more of these before somebody pulls building permits and so forth. Uh, because we don't want people going that far when there's gonna be a discussion about these things. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole point of a moratorium, right? Is to have an opportunity to talk to your planning commission, have an opportunity to talk to your planner, and have an opportunity to talk to your your residents. What do they want? How, yeah. how does how should this go for the next umpteen years? Joe, can uh, I ask you a question? The moratorium yeah. uh, states that it's for a period of one year. If we decide, can we amend that? That's max. That? Oh, okay, we, that's max. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So if you if you come up with a result or a decision within two months great, then you can just okay. end, end the moratorium. Yeah, one year is just a statutory maximum. Do you recommend a moratorium tonight or after we meet with the Planning and Zoning Board? Well, you're not meeting until the 23rd, and then when did you have another special meeting? You, you only meet once a month, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I think we should put the moratorium on right away if we're going to do it. You want to make a and motion? Then, yeah, I'll make a motion that we... Uh, 
Do you want to see what he's got? I don't okay. know if it's. It's not necessary. Yeah. I mean, it's up to you, but. Yeah. No. Okay. No. But af but after we meet on May twenty third, and we get it squared around the way we want it, we could take the moratorium off at that point. Correct. If it. If we get it straightened around. Yeah, the amount of time you spend on this is up to you folks in terms of looking at your code and, and looking at uh, what you're looking at long term in your comp plan. And like I said, getting feedback from your residents. What what do you want this place to look like in 20 years? Yeah. Okay. I, I'd, my personal opinion is that we should put a moratorium on it effective tonight. And then after the 23rd, if we um, are enlightened and figure out a way to do it to comply with the ordinance, then lift the moratorium. But we can't have everybody running in here getting permits just because we we're going to look at the ordinance. And that's probably what would happen is that tomorrow morning, people would be in here getting permits because they're afraid they're not going to get one. And right. that's not that's not what the council's about. The council's about complying with uh, uh, zoning and the ordinance. Okay, so what is your motion? My motion is to put to adopt this ordinance, putting a moratorium on uh, permits for accessory, or I don't know, do I want to say accessory? It's, it's as stated. Yeah. Uh, as motion stated. to approve the ordinance, a moratorium. That's as in. Stated. That's in the packet. I second that motion, just so we can get this, you know, settled. Okay. Any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, where are you? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries everybody except Jackson. Okay. Did we settle on a time for that workshop? 1230. 1230. 1230. 1230 on the 23rd. Okay. So, Jordan, are you going to be able to be there? I'm available to be there, yeah. Okay. Great. Because I don't think this is anything we want to drag out. We've been beating this for years. and We just want to do it right. Yeah. Okay. Public Works, Pat? All right. Uh, we got the Public Works Commission letter. Is there any questions on that? At all that need to be answered? Uh, some of it Phil is going to be talking about. Exactly. I have a question about um, the uh, automated cyber security service plan. Yep, that's the in control one. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know what the name of it was. Some of that's going to be part of the cost is they're going to go through all the computers and do some updating on stuff. And then there's cyber security threats that are coming down all your small waste treatment plants and water plants. Then go ahead. What about Extona? Don't they? I mean, their their big thing is security. Why? why um, I'm meeting doing with. That? I I got to get them this stuff. They finally got back to me this morning. I think about we, it. So I think we should have. Hold, hold on. Okay. What? Oh. But it's uh. <clears throat> part of this is some things we need changed at the plant. Anyway, we need in control, but it's just the cybersecurity end of it that is my question too. Well, isn't that why we have? It? Yeah. But they do. Yeah, but they don't, they're doing like your emails and stuff and that. I don't think they're on on the think, separate system that I, is for running the plant. I think we need to. But I, I will have more information. Like I said, they got back to me this morning on it. Okay. So we can table this one until next month and we'll go from but there. But you, you should really contact Extona and find out if they do that cybersecurity. Yeah, that's or, what that's what they what, called me this morning about. Yeah. They took me. It took two weeks for them oh. to get back to me oh. for whatever reason. Well, we, I think we hit and missed is what it was on it. I, I talked no. to I talked to Jerry and he indicated to me that we, this is we've got this in the budget. Yes, we're gonna. We're, well, we're gonna take it out of another. Uh, we have the plant, the back side of the plant. We're gonna do some work at. We're just gonna take it out of that budget and only do what we have left in the budget. Okay. For that back garage area. Necessary request path. I think we it, it actually is because they're 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 hitting the smaller towns 
because nobody has cybersecurity for or waste treatment or plants, whoever it is. <laughs> I, I still think we need to. But we'll get, I'll get with Extona since they just got back to me this morning and we'll right. cross that road. Okay. We're going to table this. Well, Pat, yes. why are we tabling it? If we can approve it tonight, then when it's available, you can move yeah, forward. But it's something you need. Because Extona hey guys, might be. We're trying to run a meeting here. Excuse me. We're trying to run a meeting here. Because Extona is uh, cybersecurity for us, and we have we contract with Extona, and I think if they can extend it to the wastewater treatment plant, then we'd be better off than going with a, a whole nother... I couldn't hear what Paul looked Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I Thank you. Like, I feel like we're already paying for it. Yeah. You know, we already have a company that'll do it. Great. If not, then we'll have to go with this other oh, person. Is, is right. someone going to investigate whether Extona can extend their That'll coverage? be me. They, uh... They got a hold of me this morning. Okay. Thank you, Pat. They, got, they were a week or two late getting back to me, so that's why. Okay. Uh, we'll table it for one month and we'll revisit it. Okay. We appreciate it. Okay. Do we need a motion for that chart or just table it? Motion. Okay. Motion. I'll make a motion to table that action. And put it on the agenda. Put it on the agenda for next month. Second. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Assessments. Oh. What's that? That's a big sheet. It's a big sheet, big table. Bill, I'm going to ask Tom, the chair of the Public Works, sure. to join you because I've got a question and I talked to him today about it. But these, this assessment policy is serious because yes. whatever we do, we're going to try to stick with. So stay with him. We And just let me just address the couple of them that I have. We've got a couple properties on here that branch off of the main road, Chatham Park, I'm gonna mention. There's about 50 houses back in Chatham Park. I believe you've got Chatham Park assessed at $2,000. 3,500. 3,500, the high end of that assessment. High, the high end, equal to the larger lots. When we did are... Birch Narrows last year, we had Birch Narrows, and at the end of Birch Narrows, we had a couple houses that were not on blacktop, they were on gravel. They both got assessed a thousand dollars each. There was about seven or eight of them there okay. on a private road that was on the end of Birch Narrows. They got yeah, they a secondary they Narrows. got a secondary assessment, which is half of what everyone else was. But so my concern is is that we've got all these offshoots. We've got uh, a couple of care buildings there. What is it, Evergreen? There's <clears throat> and that was probably a good catch that you made that we didn't realize. Did did planning and zoning look to see if those are individual parcels? They did. Um, one Ever of them is. Evergreen is individually owned condos. Yep. Chatham Park is not. Right. I mean, they own the structure, but not the land. Yep. So um, <laughs> technically, I guess the way we were looking at it, um, if we treat it similar to Moen Beach, where, you know, it's a secondary um, evergreen villas should probably be, each one of those units should probably get a secondary uh, one. I mean, and, they've got a garage, they've got one or two yep. cars, they traverse the road to get to their property. And that's yeah. true with- and I guess when we did this, we didn't realize that each each one of those units is a separate property ID. Um, well, otherwise, we would have recommended. The and thousands. I don't really care, but I would kind of like to do it and not have to change it and not overlook anything because I we have got you. three or four exceptions on yeah. Dagapine Road, and every well, road we do, we're going to have exceptions to we, it. We didn't. We didn't really follow that. What you're talking about on Daggett Pine. What we did for Daggett Pine is we, we did parcels in Birch Narrows. We did we did parcels that we went by where they were large or small. So there could have been parcels in there that had two buildings in there and stuff like that. They on Birch broken. Narrows are you talking about? Well, yeah, I'm saying yeah. that they maybe weren't broken out with their own parcel IDs, but we, we were just blanket across. If, if we passed that parcel directly, they got one, whether it was a half acre versus well, but, four acres. Phil, I think at the end of Birch Narrows, they could, we didn't go past them because they were on the back side of Birch Narrows. So they had to go across Birch Narrows right. to get they to their property. They were secondary. Just like in this, we have 21 properties that we that don't touch Daggett Pine, but they have to access Daggett Pine. 
to get to their property on either a road that's not maintained currently or not even a road yet. And those got a secondary. So okay, well, so we didn't run into a situation where we had a parcel on Daggett Pine, Birch Narrows, any of those, where we had a parcel and there was four to seven to 12 different parcel IDs within that. This is new on Daggett Pine. So every road that goes off of Daggett Pine is going to be assessed? Eventually. If you take like Eventually. Egret Road, we didn't, um, they didn't get assessments because there's a blacktop road that the city's maintaining and eventually that's going to either they're going to be directly assessed yeah. for that. So mm. in that in that in that case then Moon Beach Trail is going to pay 100% of that road when it goes in if it ever does and they're maintaining their road the city's not doing anything i think the tax who's, who's maintaining it it's private. private. Private too. So it's a private road. So for the city to take it over, you would have to bring it up to the city standards, 100%. which would be all. So you're giving the other roads uh, a wave because they're going to have to pay an assessment sooner or later. Moon Beach Trail will have to pay a hundred percent of the cost of that road. So I I don't quite get the ideology there of we're not going to assess them because they're going to get assessed. Yeah. Sooner or later, and if Moon Beach Trail comes on board, we're paying for the whole thing. Unfortunately, that's how it was set up. That the city roads that the city was maintaining um, got blacktopped and and were assessed, and now we're coming through the second second phase. Any private roads or if there's a development, then the developer has put the road in at the time and bring it up to city standards before we accept it. But there's a few roads, Moen Beach and, and think of it. Uh, Park, Park View is another one that's actually a paved road. Um, they're getting a secondary assessment. Is it a city a road? Is it a, a private road? Paid. But they need Daggett Pine to get to their property. Right. It's paid. Yeah. Right. But so you I don't know if the developer paid for it originally, or if those people petitioned and got together and did their own paving of a private road. So is Pine View the, the last one on that construction? Park View is the first one right across, almost across from Egret. Oh, it serves like I thought you said. Four, six, like, oh, yeah. Pine View. Right and then we have, um, we have Daggett, Daggett Court, which is, as you start to head up towards Dream Island and Moan Beach, is that little piece that comes on, it's maybe 10 foot wide. It's a, it's a private little leg that comes off. They're getting a $1,000 secondary assessment. Well, I think the Moan Beach Trail people paid $1,000 for a bridge that they didn't get what they got, what they were promised. Well, you guys, you guys, I don't want to turn this into a two hour I'm thing. Not, I'm just no, wondering if we should I'm table just, it till we can have a no, little more no, conversation. I don't think we should. The this one thing I'll say is I think you caught something that we weren't aware of when plant or public works looked at this, and that's that um, the evergreen, I don't know what there is in there, 20 units, and what, however many units there are, um, personally, I would consider those secondary because they're individual platted, not platted, but they're individual property um, ID. They, they all have a property tax ID number and they're owned by those individuals who have to use Daggett Pine Road to get to theirs. So Evergreen Tom, Villas and... Um, the, Chatham Park, Park, Park is not owned. Let me just say this because it's so much the same thing. Chatham Park, the people live there forever. Yep. They don't, they rent the lots. They own the houses. And so you're saying for 3,500 bucks, those 50 people, that's all they're going to get charged. No, I don't think that's true. I think that, well, I think that's, I, I, well, there's actually, there's a road that comes in off of Daggett Pine called Deer something, right? And then there's another road that parallels Daggett Pine. Those are city maintained. Yeah. And so when you have to mill and overlay or replace those, there's more assessment on that interior road. So is Chatham Park, is that blacktopped internally? Those part roads? Of it. Part of it, and part of it is not. Okay. 
Uh, well, I, I don't want to argue with you. I just want to bring it up. I no, and and the other one is uh, care for your free cottage. Yeah, the fourplex. Those are individually. They have individual right. yep. property ID so numbers. Those those also should be the secondary thousand dollars for each one of those units. So does the city go in and maintain that? If no, but they for... have to. They have to use Daggett Pine Road to get to the driveways that go into those fourplexes. That's what taxes are for, not assessments. <laughs> so, so that, here's here. I guess here's the point. Um, you're not adopting this. We we propose this is a mock assessment. We propose this uh, based on. Um, the opinion of market benefit that the city hired someone to come out and do. Um, and it established opinion of market benefit for the various parcels, whether they were residential, single family, whether they were commercial, public, religious, um, or vacant large lot residential. Uh, the group came together based on historically what the city did, meaning um, the, the projects you're citing where it was just kind of a flat fee assessed to lots regardless of size. And they, they looked and tried to um, take that and apply it to who, who was along here and then secondarily who benefited by having to use it to get there. That came up with this mock assessment. The stage now is to bring the public forward, particularly the ones that are here. They're gonna get noticed directly by a letter from the city saying, we're gonna meet on such and such date to discuss this assessment that is being considered against your property. And that's where you would take input that I think is where you're making decisions about carefree cottages and what was the other one? Evergreen? Evergreen. Evergreen. Okay. And whether they fit or whether indirect properties should be a part of this. And you're getting that input. You don't even have to decide that night, but you've gotten the input. You've taken the step of the public hearing. You may come back and revisit and you know, make some more sausage and come up with what you want. Okay, I just. But I, I think I, you need to keep going forward because, because you're. That's fine. You need yeah, that. I don't want to stop it. You know, it, I just want to make sure what we're doing in one spot is relative to the other spot. You know, it's it's fair. Yeah, well, that's and that's I still have a little bit of an issue with Chatham Park not getting anything, other than the thirty five hundred, but. That's you know me. I yeah. always have. Well, those are good. We we you know your your comments and Marsha's and and then the other sixty one parcels that are directly affected and the twenty one indirect should be a good night. Yeah. Okay. We're paying for we're paying we're paying for our own maintenance and snow removal, gravel grading, and all that stuff, and then uh, and then we're supposed to pay an assessment for Daggett Pine too. I think I pay enough taxes too so that. That portion, you could take some of that out of my property tax. Marcia, you know how this is. You need to get your neighbors to come forward and. Well, I guess I do. You bring your input. <laughs> I don't think it's right. <laughs> because it could be I, special. There's got to be. We update this to add uh, carefree cottages and evergreen as secondaries. And when I did mail, when I did the mailing, I included each of those individual people. So where is that um, assessment or the, the guy? Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Where is that? I've never seen it. The other, somewhere. I feel like I gave that to or... Public Works in the past. The City Council has not seen it. That's. It would be good since we paid for that assessment mm -hmm. that the city council would see it. Can you just send a copy to Sean sure. and she can give it to the council? Mm -hmm. So okay. are we supposed to be setting a special assessment hearing? Yeah. That's next. <laughs> so somebody make a motion to approve this resolution 24. I'll make a motion that we approve. Hey, fill it in, please. Fill it in. <clears throat> oh. Okay, well, now we, we got to come up with another date. Good Lord. Should it align? Should it align with the council meeting? I mean, I know we're going to be here at six thirty next month, but should we do the six thirty meeting and then at seven o'clock have this and then start the council meeting at nine? <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't this isn't going to be short. No. 
This will be a long meeting. Let's do another. Be all by itself. In the evening well, at six o'clock. May twenty third. <laughs> what do they need? Two weeks. At least you're yeah. going to want to get these out to people. Right. What about Wednesday the 29th at six o'clock? That's too that's soon. soon. May? Is that 14? No. That's we less need 14 than day one, publication, 14 day seven, mail. Seven. You want to get into June. Yeah, that is more than 14. Oh, are you? Okay. We'll go into June. Five days. Gotcha. June. Business days. You're probably into June sometime. Yeah. Yes. So the week of the 10th. Okay, so we have, I think we have something on the. So, so in this um, analysis, will it show the reasoning behind the um, benefit, the increased value in the property? Hmm. And why? No. Because the law hasn't changed. There's still got to be a benefit. Mr. Attorney. I think it's got to be 11, 12, I believe 30. there was a benefit appraisal that was done on most of the prop on, no. on a specific types of properties of within that opinion. district. It's an opinion of market benefit. For most of this, um, we're on the well, we're on the low end, but Marshall, why don't you pick a date? So I would say the eleventh, twelfth, or thirteenth, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Is that June? Mm -hmm. no. June. And it should start at five o'clock? Run till seven or something? I don't know what you're, if you've got complaints about people getting here by five in the past, or if not, that's that sounds good. 5.30? Should we do it on June 11th? Because the 12th and 13th, they may have stuff going. The yeah. 11th, is that good? Yeah, yeah. sure. At 5.30? It's yeah. really how, you know, Char has to do all the legwork, mm -hmm. so. Is that okay, Char? That sounds good. Oh, oh, no, Jerry has to be here. Jerry has to be here. We have to do it on the 12th. Jerry doesn't have to be here. Oh, come on. He's he a glutton. He's a glutton for punishment. He leaves do the 12th. That. He didn't for vacation. Oh, good. <laughs> well, yeah, so if we did it on the 11th, it'll so be So we're doing perfect. it the 11th. Well, we just do it still here. the 10th. You're the 11th. Yeah. So and five. you want to be here all night, the night before you leave. So 530. Give the guy a break. No, that's a council meeting. June 10th. Don't that's our council know. meeting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, can you do it on the 11th? We'll get you out of here by 6.30. Yes, sir. You don't have to go come do it. Hey, let's just do it on the 11th. We're never going to come up with a date. What We're on the 11th. Okay. I realize we've said five or six meetings. Yeah. Okay, can we add that? And you guys want 5.30? Yes. Five, I don't know, whatever. But do you want it earlier or later, Char? Which are you talking about? I just don't like 30s for, I don't know. It was 5 o'clock? Let's do it 5 then. Jeez. So Hard for on people the to remember. Yeah, no. yep. June that 11th. works. Could you remember your 30s, Char? No. <laughs> the early 30s or the later 30s? Are we, are we now on the 11th? Yes, the 11th at 5 p.m. Road assessment. Okay. Good. 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 So I, okay. I moved to accept the resolution to have a um, meeting on the road assessments uh, at 5 o'clock on Tuesday, June 11th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Phil. Okay, TJ, what do you got here? It shows I have three, but I only have two items as Peter took mine earlier in open forum. Um, the first item I have is a memo dated May 8th, 2024 from myself and Pat. We have completed our review for maintenance technician, Mark Horak. Mark started his employment with the city in November of 2023 and has since proven to be a reliable asset. Mark is a quick learner and a hard worker. We are recommending that Mark is removed from probationary status and be placed as a regular full-time employee for the city of Cross Lake, along with moving him from step four to step five on the 2024 AFSCME salary schedule, which would be effective May 20th. I'll make a motion that we take off maintenance technician Mark Horak and move him from step four to step five. Second. TJ, who does he spend more time with? 
in the winter he's with public works and now just recently he transitioned over to the parks and he's going to be mowing and spin trimming for us for the season everything's good everything's good all in favor aye, aye. opposed carries thank you he will be happy about that um second item here i have a, i have a cross lake pickleball court reservation policy it's a pretty straightforward policy um we had this set in place this is this was recommended to be put in front of you by the parks commission um, we've had a few 501c3s wanting to use our courts for a fundraising opportunity for them um, so we kind of wanted to set something in place so we didn't have like all of our summer prime time spots filled with reservations for 501c3s however we do recognize that we do want to help the community and we have these nice courts um, so if we can help out a community 501c3 that's our goal and and that's why we have this policy set in place or in front of you to hopefully approve it. So you need a motion? Correct. Sandy, go ahead. Yeah, I move to uh, accept the uh, Cross Lake Pickleball Court Reservation Policy. Second. And the rates. Yeah. Second by Aaron. All in favor? Uh, aye. Opposed? Thank you. Motion carried. Got another public forum. Action may or may not be taken on any issue raised. If council requires more information or, or consideration, the issue will be placed on the next regular council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. Anybody have anything? No. <laughs> okay, we're going to close public forum. City attorney? Nothing for me, no. Nothing. New business? Marsha? Over here. Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. Um, housekeeping issues, uh, interviews for city administrator. Uh, you folks met last Friday individually with, with Mike from Bladeck. Um, the consensus amongst your group was that candidate number one, two, three, and number five were your chosen candidates. Uh, there was some question about candidate number three and whether there was a degree that was achieved. Uh, we looked into that and there, there is not a degree. The individual was 16 credits short of degree. Um, we, I guess I'm asking you folks if you, if we've only heard from one of the, the people to exclude. I'm asking you folks if you want to exclude number three from the final interview because yeah. she does have, not have a have degree. To. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't meet the okay. qualifications. That that said, that that takes care of that. Um, we we are anticipating that uh, with that, I should say that the uh, candidate number one was Jenny Max. Uh, candidate number two was Pat Oman. And candidate number five was Nathan Earhart. Um, mm -hmm. If it's in your, with your blessing, we would schedule interviews to happen on May 20th, a week from today. Um, probably start at 10 in the morning. 10 o'clock? Yeah, okay. that's okay. Okay. Um, Did you double check that with? Because I, I had an email from Mike. I had, I had nine o'clock. Nine, but I had nine o'clock. But ten is fine with me. Are these Jerry? Are these Zoom or? No, no these are face-to-face -face interviews. Okay. The, the consensus of the council was that we originally talked about doing Zoom interviews on the twentieth. Um, the consensus of the council was we go straight to the the interview questions. Um, and I, I hope I'm still on the same same path. But again, I'm suggesting starting at 10. If you have a conflict with that, we can start anytime later than that is, is fine too. That's fine. I just think Whatever. we got we got an email saying it was gonna be nine. If 10 is what it is, it yeah. is. That's that's down nine. I'm sure that well and let's just confirm it. I just confirm it. Let's let's do let's stay at 10. Okay. Mike is not going to have an issue with that. Okay. Previously, in an, in an email that you folks got, you got a list of questions. I would appreciate if each one of you would take that list of questions and pick out seven that you want to use. 
and we will uh, figure it out from there and, and put the final list together prior to the interview process. Give you that list by Thursday of so, this week? I would like that list as soon as possible, and I have extra copies for you yeah. this evening. I will take that. How many know, How many questions are on that list? I, I looked at the list, and I thought they were all There's probably fine. 35 or, or 40 questions total. On the final? Final? No, the final. No. I'm. We're talking the final, right? We're only doing one. Right. No, the final interview questions. That's you had you had the Zoom questions and then you had the final interview questions. Right. That's but I'm assuming that you might want to have some of those Zoom questions asked as part of the final questions. Oh, so you want us to pick from the whole thing. I want you to pick from both, if that's possible. Uh, number third item, and then I'll I'll shut up. But um, Mike and I have talked about the use of a uh, moderator to actually moderate the, the the questions for you so that you... I can't do it that day, Jerry. I can only break away for an hour. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's too late to joke like that. <laughs> I'm tr we're we're actually proposing something that might make it easier for you and and easier to to hang in there and do. Uh, yeah, Tyler has has volunteered to do that if Perfect. if you wish. Great. Perfect. Yep. You go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, that Volunt said, I would also uh, my I'm planning on having those individuals meet with our department heads prior to their interview so that they can get familiar with who's working for the city. Um, we're also going to ask one of those department heads to um, show those folks around if they choose to get a uh, tour. Uh, we think that that will take place prior to their individual interviews. Perfect. Great. That'll probably be on the 19th or something like that. No, that will happen an hour before the their interview. On the same time. Okay. So the candidate that's entering at ten, you'll tell them to come in at nine, do an hour tour. Yes. One that's at eleven will come in at ten, so yes, they, they won't jump on each other's back. That is exactly right. Okay. So sounds good. We're, we're on the same page. Perfect. Did you want to announce your vacation? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you announced it already. <laughs> It's public knowledge now. Any other new business? Any old business? Marsha. Hey, Jackson. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, that's a